The next stop on the Journey to Impact Tour is Lexington, North Carolina. Odell decides that he's not gonna go down to Davidson with the rest of the crew. So he and Darius decides to go in one car and Robert and I are in another. He's all upset because I've been picking on him a little bit about the ball game, about his height, about Arnold, and that is nothing in comparison to the Christmas gift you guys will see. See, people do subtle things to try to get inside your mind and all this stuff. He be playing subliminal mind games and all the stuff he does. It don't get to me, it don't phase me. Vince, I can assure you the next episode is worth seeing the Christmas gift. This basketball game, are we ever gonna play? He's always making jokes about me. Oh, you're short, you're like Gary Coleman. You're short, I'm gonna post you up and blah, 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 blah. Really? Come on, man. Vince, your ball, your ball has gone flat, sir. It's gonna be epic. Odell and I were asked to speak at the 3MP, the Male Minority Mentoring Program at Davidson Community College. And this group, even though it wasn't very large, it was very much different in that the audience were, they were really, really engaged, not only from a student to speaker perspective, but even from a student to professor perspective, because there were also professors in the room. Even though the crowd wasn't huge, it's not always about quantity, but it's about quality. And we believe that the quality information, the education that Vincent and I uh, parlayed to the students, to the faculty that was present, allowed for a greater impact. What's always refreshing as a presenter is when your audience members have questions after you finish presenting, because it really lets us know that they were paying attention that they were gleaming from the information and we had so many questions but what was really 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 great was when other audience members started answering questions using the information that we gave and it became more of a you know what let's all throw in our ideas to solve this person's problem that they were having at that particular time with regards to business and their personal life so the event different but it was really really impactful Sometimes you wonder, sometimes you wonder, you, you hear yourself talk a lot and you wonder, wow, is my message really sinking in? And when you get those questions, you really, really know it. So that was great. And it was so great that they want to bring us back. So we're going to have episode part two, Davidson County. We're going to do the thing. After the event, we had an opportunity to speak with Dr. Giddings about the program that he has there at Davidson Community College, as well as the things that he wants to make sure he instills in the students. And as always, we find some fantastic people who can clearly articulate their message and what it is they want to help their students do to make them better people in the long run. In terms of the Minority Male Mentoring Program, uh, we do feel that there's a need to uh, provide support and resources for males who have been historically underrepresented in higher education. Um, however, we are finding that um, the work, if you will, is much bigger than just one population. We, we are preparing students for uh, the global community, to be successful in the global community, to be comfortable not only with themselves, but with people who are not like them. Uh, we feel that the IMPACT program will provide students with the information they need to equip them to be successful in the global community after graduation. I am the parent of a 13-year-old male who happens to stand six feet tall, which is taller than I am, weighs 200 pounds, and sometimes just the generation gap being his mom, I am unable to communicate with him in a way that he understands. And so as I sat there as a participant in the program and listened to the authentic voice of young men who have crossed the paths that my son is crossing right now and see them on the other side, I was inspired 
to know that an organization like Impact is around and that there will be a voice that my son can relate to when it's his turn. I, I would like for students as well as my colleagues to be comfortable with diversity, to be comfortable with the fact that the world has changed, it will never be the same. The fact that we have a, 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 a population of students, if you will, who, who have talents and skills that we need to help cultivate because there are so many obstacles um, that exist nowadays that um, um, perpetuate, if you will, mediocrity, um, discomfort, doubt, um, that attacks their self-esteem. And I just see our role as educators um, as, 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 a, as a tool or a resource for cultivating students um, so that they are ready for the challenges that they will face um, as, as the next generation of leaders. None of us are in this alone. And that when you find that there's an area that you may not be an expert in, it's okay to pick up the phone, it's okay to open up your laptop and Google and find an organization in your area or the surrounding area, or even an organization like Impact that travels to come in and do what you are unable to do. It's very important to find the tools that you need to get the job done. And that is the impact that I wanna make on others, mothers and fathers who may not be able to communicate well with their young people. It's okay to pick up the phone and to Google and say, ooh, there's impact. I think that those gentlemen and the messages that I see when I hear it come through the text message or the YouTube videos that they've posted, I believe that through their voice, they might be able to achieve, whether it's in my home with my own son, whether it's in the youth group I might work with outside of that, whether it's in the PTA or even in my church, any organization that I'm affiliated with, if there is a voice that can speak to that group better than I can with a message that will definitely impact them, go get it, don't be afraid. After answering questions from the students as well as the staff, it was time for us to leave campus. And as we're leaving campus, we see this building that has a car in it. And not only does it have a car in it, but it's a race car. So of course, we had to go investigate. You guys would not believe the impact that this university, this city is having on NASCAR and the race industry. The directors of the building were so very kind to us. They invited us in to show us around and they had this poster that showed the features and the accomplishments of the car. Then they took us back into the shop to allow us to see what the students were working on, the new technology that all of the new cars have nowadays, even down to how it is that they're building a brand new engine with the new technology. This place was really, really special and we're just really, really grateful for those guys allowing us to see that information, to see the advancements they're making with NASCAR and in the race industry. And we wanna say thank you. Davidson County Community College, you guys were amazing and wonderful. But more importantly, you guys were truly kind at Southern Hospitality. And we can't stay long. However, we are grateful that we get to come back again next semester. That lets us know that you appreciated our message just as much as we appreciated you all. The next stop on the Journey to Impact Tour is the FBLA North Carolina Southeast Regional Event.